Hey there, this is Gretchen Ritter, and you are listening to the Beach Bucket Podcast. I've spent most of my life eating food from great restaurants all up and down the East and West Coast. Here at Beach Bucket Podcast, we are sampling food from the greatest family resort on the East Coast, Ocean City. So pull up a stool and enjoy the Beach Bucket Podcast. Welcome to the Beach Bucket Podcast. And today we are talking to Greg Beck from Surfer Supply at 3101 Asbury Avenue, dare I say, an Ocean City institution since 1962. Welcome, Greg. Gretchen, thanks for having me here today. Hello. How are you on this um, cold December morning? Any better, I'd be concerned. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. <laughs> Great to know. And uh, let's let's get right into it. Right let's, on. Let's talk... Uh, Let's talk surfer supply. How did it all begin? Oh, it's a very interesting story. There's a gentleman, George Gerlach, who opened it 60 years ago this year. Um, And he was from Lancaster originally, but Dr. Gerlach, his father, and their family had a place at 16th Street, I believe, growing up. George does a lot of things, gets into the surfing thing, and in Lancaster with his and this is how it all started. This is a really cool story. And his buddy, Paul Ruger, and he find plans to make a surfboard. And I want to say popular mechanics, not exactly sure. They build it in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay. And now they both came down here to, to, to vacation and spend summers. And they build this thing. People already know a little bit who George was, like neighborhood people. That was pretty much about it. They take the board out 14th Street, right? And... George surfs on it. And then all these people are like, what the heck is George doing? What is that? What? What? So he gets back in from surfing and like a small little group of people kind of gather. And George looks to, looks to Paul and he says, Hey Paul, man, I think I'm in business. So that's how the whole thing started. And it just took off from there. And that was the main inspiration. And George had been doing a lot of things just searching to, Hey man, what do I want to do? You know? And then the surfboard thing hit, he was just like, Oh, this is really cool. And he sold the business to Andrew and I in 04, but he'll tell you, he really didn't make a whole lot of money up through the, I mean, he opened in 62 through the sixties and seventies, really make it, make a whole lot of loot. But you know, he, he, he did what he could to preserve a lifestyle uh, that um, he really enjoyed. Now, he got instructions out of Popular Mechanic? Mm-hmm. To- yeah, there was a plan there. And apparently in the magazine, there was a plan to make a surfboard. It was made of wood. The board still lives. I know where the board is. You're kidding. No. That's fantastic. Made of, yes. made of wood. Made of wood. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. it at Surfer Supply? It is not at Surfer Supplies, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I know. And, and did great. he like get out of the water and start taking orders, essentially? <laughs> I don't know if it went that briskly, this so quickly, but no, he, that didn't happen. But he just, he was just inspired to do it. This is this is cool. And um, yeah, and it, it happened for him. And George, you know, is a very dear, sweet man, and not only in the surfing community, but in the community at large. You know, he really was. And um, did a lot of great things, and um, he ran. A, I mean, he was so concerned always about the the customer's needs, not about the never about the dollar so much, but the customer's needs. And if and he always wanted to make sure, find out, ask questions, which we still do. Ask. We have more questions of customers than they do have of us. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how you find out the customer's needs. And if you can meet them and help them out and get them the right gear, that's wonderful. And it, if you don't have it, you, you, know, you know, just be honest with them. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, George ran an honest business. So he's not just a, a businessman. He was a true pioneer. Mm, yeah, I, he, he helped pioneer the sport and the culture, the surf culture here, for sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Was it at the same location? It's been at the same lo- He opened up on the bay for one year at, I believe, 9th Street. And then he went to 31st and Asbury, 3101 Asbury, um, one year into business. So he opened up on the bay and he was, he designed a lot of really cool boat stuff. He was in the, he was in the boating, mm-hmm. water skier, um, you know, and a fisherman. 
designed propellers, designed boats, all this kind of crazy stuff. I mean, his, some of his designs actually got published. You had to walk over outboard motors and through puddles of oil just to get to where the surfboards were. And then he, he realized that, you know, I, I can't stay here. And this is a cool story. Um, he gets to the point where he needs to find a, a space, but he has to find a space that has 10 foot ceilings because there were only longboards back then. Sure. Oh, okay. Which now has come back in a style where, you know, it's hard to find, you know, surfboard standing up in some places, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they're, they're still standing up at surface supplies. And so he has a friend of his, John Loper, a, a local, he was a contractor for a long time, but owns the, the Northwood Inn. Yeah. And so John found this place for him. And he's got, he's got 10 foot ceilings. So he, he goes to his dad, Dr. Gerlach. He goes, Yeah, John found me a, uh, he found me a space, but man, it's expensive, dad. It's $600 for the season. I don't know if I can afford it. And his dad goes, his dad goes, Hey, man, if you're not going to rent it, I am. That's, that's what he told George. Mm-hmm. And that's was, the, the nudge that that I think Dr. Gerlach thought that George needed, and George had been there ever since, and the building is still relatively unchanged, other than having some uh, updates um, to the um, to the building. Um, I mean, ex- you know, expanded on. Uh huh. So the big thing was I need tw- I need ten foot ceilings. Yeah, that-, that was the big thing, and there was there was really nothing else to be sold in the surfboard industry back then, other than wax, <laughs> surfboard sure. wax. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, there were wetsuits, and you know. Uh, some other little accessories, but I mean, it wasn't the 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 big clothes horse that it is now. There there weren't the accept the all the accessories. There weren't the, it wasn't the clothing, nor was there you know pro- professional surfing's a little different. Which yeah, it's you know it has a little bit of effect, but you know it's it's the the the, the business is really huge now. But you know, I had space for like surfboards. That was it. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now. When did your involvement and Andrew Funk's involvement? <laughs> yeah, I started in 85. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and you started working little, for George? I was just a little grom, <laughs> <laughs> as they say. Yeah, I was I was 18, and uh, I was really – I mean, I was freaking out when I when they asked me to work there. And you were just coming down for the summer? Out. Yeah, I was coming down five? for the summers, yeah. I grew up in Bridgeton, uh-huh. and um, so I stayed there, and I was – you know, I was really fortunate to have been exposed to the ocean and the whole family appreciating the same thing. But I, I saw this thing happening where these people were riding these things coming in off the ocean. I was like, and I was, I, I was seven or eight at the time, you know, and I'm like, I got to figure out what that is, man. And um, I ended up doing it. And it, it all, all goes back to a guy named Henry Bender and who was good friends with my parents Still a dear friend of mine today. He brought a surfboard over for my brother's birthday one one day. And my brother wasn't a surfer. And I'm like, oh, he got the board, you know? And my birthday is two months after Baz. I'm like, why couldn't Henry wait? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm so, going to get my hands on so that. I, I, oh, I did. Mm-hmm. And so it was a no name. It had nothing on it. And it, it was like, so, and I knew nothing about boards back then. I didn't know what the right size was. I didn't know anything. So I'm like, first week goes by, Baz doesn't touch it. Basil's my brother. Mm-hmm. So Baz. And I'm like, yeah, Baz didn't touch that board. All right, I'm going to give him two more weeks. Another week goes by, doesn't touch it. I'm like, one more week. And then, boom, I started surfing it. Yeah. Now, did so he that's had- how I got into surfing. But as far as the surf shop thing goes, you know, I was, it was great. Um, having gone, grew up through that shop surface supplies and then finally landing there and and getting involved and it was it was it was it was a great opportunity who who'd have thought that you know, Leon Grom could be you know part owner of a successful surf shop. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Now yeah. did you approach him? Did you say, well, hey, this I, is my my dream? Well, you know, I, I was gonna I was gonna split because I I felt I hit the ceiling and I was gonna go and I went back to school and I was gonna be I was going to be an art teacher and graphic designer but then uh, there was an opportunity for me to become the manager and george goes hey listen you know th- th- this space has opened up you know and um and he's like i know you're back in school so you know if if you need some time to think about it you let me know george is like a father to me <clears throat> and uh i said yeah I- i'll think about it george 
And I went like this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he goes like this. I thought you needed to think about it. I said, I did. Mm -hmm. So I was going to school full time and working full time. And, you know, and then this thing happened. And it was just like, I'm not a, f I don't, you know, it was just the start of the whole thing. And then I was really fortunate to have, you know, to meet Andrew and Andrew and I had done some traveling with George before and worked together. And it's just been, uh, and then the opportunity came to us. He says, Hey man, boys, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chill now and I, I want to offload the shop. And we're like, okay. And Andrew and I were able to get it done. That's fantastic. It's a great, it's a great story. I mean, two young surfers jumping into this whole thing and it's worked out great. We have a, a just a great time at the shop. Now you guys took it over what year? Oh, four. Oh, four. Mm -hmm. And what has the evolution of the shop been like since oh, four? Pre-computer. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, pre-computer. So that, that was something that, you know, I, I still struggle with. <laughs> Okay, this is a cool pair of shorts. Are we going to bring that in for spring? Or, okay, w what do we need to do, you know, as far as advertising or marketing or stuff like that from there to there? And I think it's just a matter of moving forward with how quickly, you know, business trends happen, but always maintaining your core values that got you where you are today. And, and we have never lost sight of that. Mm -hmm. And that's very, that's very important to Andrew and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be a surfer to own a surf shop? I think it's a prerequisite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you don't know how to use equipment, then you can't sell it. Of course. Honestly. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, here's a surfboard. Well, yeah, this one's good for you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to sell a guy that's starting out how to surf. And he's like, 200 pounds, you're going to sell them a five foot 10 inch surfboard. It's going to feel like a popsicle stick. Sure. And again, it goes back to us making sure that the customer get, you know, mm -hmm. their, their needs are met, you know. On the flip side of that, how does a surfer become a good businessman? Uh, make sure they show up to work every day and not put up a gone surfing sign. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. George always said that. <laughs> did he? He did. That's great advice. He, because he, like he always said, he's like, hey, man, if they're surf, and they need surf stuff. It makes sense because they're going surfing, you know? So, I mean, that's one of the things that you can probably take take out of the, you know, that that question is, yeah, man, don't put a gone surfing sign up when, you, you know, but that, that was like a long time ago. Nobody would do that today, but just, you know, sh you know, show up. Now let's talk surfboards. Yeah. Cool. Let's talk surfboards. One of my favorite subjects. Absolutely. <laughs> Where do you um, want to start? <laughs> well, let's start with the beginner. Mm -hmm. What are you going to tell the beginner that walks into your shop and says, hey, I want to learn to surf? What well, are you going to say to him? Yeah, going back to the, you know, the, the, a few minutes ago, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked of the, 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 the person who's communicating with the new surfer or any surfer. And you say, okay, first thing, you know, how much do you weigh? That's like, should always be the first question. How much do you weigh? How much surfing have you done? How big of boards have you ridden? So you can have a frame of reference as to what the, what they know of so far. What's their previous experience and what, what are they relating to, you know? And so if they got the right size board and they want to get their own, you know, then then you kind of recommend, hey, you, does, you feel good on the board? It's like, yeah. Okay, great. You feel good on the board. You're enjoying yourself? Yeah, you're having fun. You're catching waves? Yeah. So you kind of stay in there, but if they're not in the ballpark, you say, hey, I think there's a better board out there for you. But typically you go big when you're just starting out, okay, because the boards are more stable, okay, easier to ride, easier to learn on. You smile more because you get more waves and you surf better. So you smile more and, and you want that. Mm -hmm. And it, it builds confidence in one surfing. And then as they get better, depending what their aspirations are, they can move either to something bigger. Maybe they want to ride a longboard. They like that aesthetic, you know, that groovy kind of stylized uh, longboard feel, style, groove. Or if they, you know, and a lot of the young kids want to go to the shortboards and do all this radical stuff, modern surfing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but that takes some time to move down because it is a difficult adjustment moving down in size and learning how to operate a small board where moving, going bigger is always easier. But so again, it's like really kind of finding out what the customer's needs are, at, you know, and, and talking to them. How long does it take someone to learn to get up on a board? It's individual. Mm -hmm. It's individual. But um, I gave lessons for like a really long time. And 
typically, uh, you know, and we we break it down as, as as easy and as concise as possible, so it's easy to understand in a short amount of time because lessons were an hour long. Invariably, most people get up in their first lesson. Really. That's great. But break it down in the mechanics of the whole thing. There's 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 technique and and uh, to it and a process. And you're trying to teach them good habits straight away so they'll have success going down the road on their own. You know, it's like learning how to stand up on a surfboard. It's like you again create good habits and learning how to do it. It's kind of like playing the guitar or learning how to swing a golf club. I mean, you can go out and do it yourself, but. Sometimes you create bad habits, but you're getting it done still, but there's sometimes an easier way to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't play golf, I don't play guitar, but I know about, I, I've heard this before. So pardon me, everybody. Um, so, yeah, just, it, and, and then, you know, it, and if they have the right board, it just makes it easy for them. And we see a lot of times when people just don't have the right board, it makes it harder for them. But God bless them. If they get through it, they get through it. That's great. And it says a lot, that has a says a lot for their ability if they're on the wrong board. It's, you know, it says, hey, man, this, this person's got it. Sure. They can do it, you know. And, and then you think about it, it's like, boy, I can imagine what they'd surf, be surfing like on the right board. Right. Yeah. So, they, they, they come in and they all of a sudden get the right board. And then it's like 20-20 vision. <laughs> I imagine. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk cold weather surfing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of gear? Well, you know, it, it's – you know, you need the right thickness of a wetsuit. That's that's the starting point, like a five millimeter wetsuit. Is that th what people one. are surfing in yeah, right now? That's right. The, the, the water is 48 today. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, it's cold. And the air temperature is 34 uh, from what my car said on my way down here. And it's cold. It is and cold. And the water is cold, but the wetsuits work great. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, you know, so you would want at least a five mil wetsuit, which means – the wetsuit would be five millimeters thick in the the uh, legs and the body, and then typically you're going to get four or three out in the arms for more flexibility. But we shorten it up to a five mil, and then you're wearing five mil gloves, five mil boots. There's a hood connected to the wetsuit, and you're locked in. And you're ready to go. Yeah. Now, beginners should not be out in cold weather. There's no reason why they shouldn't. Really? If they're feeling that ambitious and they want to do it and they love it that much and they get the right suit, I mean, they're not going to be any more susceptible to having a problem with the cold water than, say, myself. Okay. You know, they just want to go out there and, you know, and, and, and bob around and do their best, you know, you know, in the cold water and they really want to do it. God bless them. Let them go. Let's let's talk about waves in the winter. Mm -hmm. Are they bigger in the winter? They can be. Yeah. Hurricane season. Uh, what's what's the, it? Called? The hurricane. The hurricane season is fun, but they're different swells than the winter swells. And it, to put it in layman's terms, to, to separate the two would be a little difficult. But we seem to get our best waves, I think, in the winter from the northeasters that come by. Because although it's a short-lived swell, because the, the northeasters come by quickly, mm -hmm. and they they produce surf so quickly, and but close, kind of to the to the to the east coast, to the seaboard, so closely, and then it breaks in a way that it it doesn't get really long. So, we call it a closeout sometimes when you have a very long wave and all breaks at once. It doesn't give you an opportunity to approach the wave and do what you may want to do on it. Whereas, uh, you know, you have a particular swell direction where the wave is coming from, mm -hmm. where the waves are, the, uh, were, are emanating from at a certain time period. How many seconds are between the waves? And the wind direction. That all comes together in the winter, man, like it's crazy, like it it gets. Uh, um, dare I say it? World class. Wow. And then in and that's locally derived waves. Like they are made. Whereas hurricane swells or tropical swells, they they emanate from a very long distance away. And this is how all the great places on the planet get their swell from a long ways away. But they have structure underneath the ocean to allow them to hold up. And break properly, but they come in and they travel. I mean, we'll get swell from 800 miles away, but a lot of times it's it's separated and long, and we just have straight beaches, which doesn't provide structure to allow the wave to hold up mm -hmm. and only break it once. 
Mm-hmm. I hope this is making sense. It, it does. What are the the best surf spots in Ocean City? Um, usually, um, the north end of the island has a kind of like a bump in it. Um, you know, Ocean City's built like kind of like a boomerang a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you go up and it starts to get good. And all these breaks are exposed. I'm not going to bum anybody out by telling anybody. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. So, you know, eighth to up to Waverly, there's all kinds of really good waves through there. To, and, and they're all different too. So it all depends on the swell direction. What, like, is the swell coming, you know, the waves emanating from the northeast or is an east swell? And is the wind west or is it northwest? You know, what's the tide doing? All that stuff. Those are all factors in what place is going to be working good. But that bump in the island up there between 8th and 8th and North or 8th and, and Waverly, it just seems to be like exposed a little better than the, the rest of the island. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Surfing etiquette. Yeah. Beginner surfers. What do they need to know? Uh, someone that's willing to teach them, <laughs> you know. How do you go out there and not piss people off? Well, there's a lot more surfer <laughs> like that. <laughs> piss people off. Is there's a lot, there are a lot more surfers now around than when when George opened the store and when I started surfing. Um, but you know, I I try to help uh people in the water. You know, when I see them and they're learning, whether it's about etiquette or technique, I try to help them. You know, I don't know, and I'd like to see a little more of it. I think that, that, you know, the more experienced surfers should be more receptive to helping people in the water, you know, rather than yelling at them or, or reprimanding them or something like that. You know, so it's always, you know, hey, man, you know, this is where you want to be. This is the reason why you want to be here, because these guys are riding this way and you don't want to be in their way. And you have to, you know, you have to look around to see what's going on around you. And not only that, you know. And the etiquette, yes. And you don't want to drop in on somebody. I don't know if you're know, familiar with that term. Explain so, that. Tr- dropping in is when you have one person has a priority on the wave where they're closer to where the wave is going to fold over, mm-hmm. where it's going to break. They're closer to w- the curl. So whoever has that first has the wave. Now, if you're on the outside where you're putting – the, the surfer with priority between the curl and you, and you, you, then you surf down the wave and you drop in, you're dropping in on them and that's unsafe and it's poor etiquette. Mm-hmm. So don't put another surfer between you and the curl because that, that's, that's poor etiquette and it's dangerous. Unfortunately, a, a lot of places, crowded spots, there is a lot of aggression in the world. Sometimes there can be, and you're going to see it even from people that know they're not supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. But that, that still has to be taught though. To people getting into the sur- in, in the surfing, it still needs to be taught. Like when I was a kid, we had all the older guys were all teaching us how to do that stuff. They took the time to do it, you know. And it doesn't make any sense to come down on anybody in a negative way. Like support them, help them out. Hey, man, let's do it this way the next time. Are people that are have been out there surfing for a long time receptive to that or do they see these it, these new surfers out there um, and think oh my god get you know, the hell out it, you know what so I, I i hear that a bit and that's disappointing to hear no i don't surf the crowded spots anymore you know i surf some of the you know more often than not, i kind of fly under the radar um you know so where i surf it's easier you know, and, and, and where I surf, there's, there are a lot of beginner, there are beginner surfers because they're easier waves and they're less crowded. So that, that person's, I think, f- feels more comfortable going to places like that. In which case you notice that they're, they're inexperienced. So, you know, you put forth a little helpful advice. It, it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk your your surf report. Now I know Surfer Supply does a surf report. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have for a million years. Yeah, for a long time. I don't know when answering machines first came out. I mean, they were all made of tape because little cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. But, the, you know, since I started in 85, we had it there and George had it way before I was there. And it's fun. Did you have it on your answering machine? Why are you telling me about the... Uh- the cassette? Uh-huh. Well, just because that's what, the, that was the only, the, the, everything's digital now. Uh-huh. Our, our, um, our recording that we have is digital. So there's, there's no moving parts. And, but when I first started there, it was on a little tiny cassette player. That's, <laughs> that's how great. it was recorded. That's great. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. And you, you kind of, 
hit play, erase. He had uh, this whole process he had to do before you could record it, where this is easy now with the digital thing. But anyway, so what we do is we go and we check the weather. And it's not that hard. You know, I mean, I'm not a meteorologist by any means, but <laughs> um, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard. And you just go get the weather. You go to like, um, and, and you can, you can, I mean, a lot of people that have a lot of different, they can access a lot of different wave, wave forecasting sites online, you know, um, and they can get accurate surf reports for ev- virtually every place on the planet. You know, even though Surfline might come out of California, they know what's going to happen here or Magic Seaweeds and English outfit, and they, they know what's going to happen here. But there's always a little something about local knowledge that is, is kind of like the equalizer there because we'll know what spot actually might be working a little better than other spots, that sort of thing. So you can call. And so, yeah, the surfboard weather, our prediction, boom, overnight, call it in. Or you can call us all day long and get a live report. Okay. And then you can ask questions. Nice. Yeah. And like, you know, hey, what's, what do you think is good now? It's like, well, with this wind direction, I would go here. You know, okay. So you can ask those questions. That's great. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Your product line. Now, you guys not only sell surfboards, not only sell the, the surf accessories and gear, but you have all kinds of, uh, I was in the store the other day and you have jeans with mm-hmm. surfer supply. There you are. You're wearing them right now. On the now. model. There you are the model. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good one, but <laughs> Andrew does the modeling for us. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> now, when when did that evolve? When did you have it's, your own it's, product? Line? It's been a progression because what's happened is the surf industry is different than it was thirty years ago, and with the advent of large department stores and online shopping, a lot of the large manufacturers have gone to those venues and have really the support to the, to the, to the little brick and mortar, tiny surf shops that helped them get to where they are today. They're not really kind of like, I don't know that the support is really still there. I don't want to badmouth anybody, but I don't, so, so now to different and everybody else has it, mm-hmm. you know? And so now to help differentiate yourself from other surf shops, so everybody can have their own identity and as, as every surf shop should, you can select uh, from a lot of different manufacturers as to what you want to put your logo on and mm-hmm. how you want to do it, how you want to present yourself. You know, so it's really a cool thing. And, and it's fun to really be building your own line, your own brand. And Andrew and I both are very much involved in developing, you know, how we want our logo to be seen on, on garments and clothing and stuff like that. Is that fun? It's, you know, it's fun. Um, it is, it's a lot of fun. And the creative process is what I dig a lot because I, I never personally, I never thought, um, I would be able to apply my art background to what I do for a living. And now it's, it's like all the time, mm-hmm. which I love, mm-hmm. which I love. And nothing gets done with getting a bunch of, a, a few sets of eyes on it. So it's not like an end all be all work. I mean, this is what it's going to look like, everybody. You know, I, we take everything. Andrew takes stuff to me, his ideas, and we look at it. And I got my graphics that I do, and I take them to him. He's like, what do you think? And, and I'll even show him the customers before they even become close to, you know, an official design. I'll show, I'll show the customers like a, th- uh, a thumbnail sketch. Mm-hmm. And it makes them, it stokes them out. It's like, oh, I'm on the ground floor figuring this whole thing out. This is really cool. That is cool. I know. It's great. But it's great to get the opinions of people. There's nothing, nothing wrong with a good critique, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how it happens. And, you know, Andrew and I really, we do really enjoy it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Keeps everything fresh, keeps everything fun. What's your biggest accomplishment in? In surfer supply and in the, in the uh, evolution of this business, what, what do you think? Still doing it. Still doing it? Still growing? Still doing it. That's the biggest accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Still doing it. I'm fortunate. Mm-hmm. We're both fortunate. You know, we're just doing something we enjoy doing, and that's the, that's the, that's the biggest accomplishment. You know, somebody said, you enjoy what you do when you go to work. You don't work out a day in your life. That's true. You know, and I, 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 I love it. I enjoy it. I love the people. That's the best part. Yeah. How's the hiring process? Andrew and I do a great job of connecting with the kids that come in the store. And it's always been this way. And it's, it's rare that we ever take, uh, we hire somebody from an application, somebody that we don't know. But it's these kids that come in since they're tiny kids. 
and you're going to get to know them, you know? So you get, you, you kind of know what kind of character they have. Are they congenial? Are they respectful? Uh, you know, do they, do they have that whatever, do they have that X factor thing going on there? You know, friendly, that sort of stuff. And if, if, if they haven't, they show the interest then, and they're just nice kids, you know, and well, surf, surfing is a prere- prerequisite. Of course. For all the guys and girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but you don't have to be a pro surfer. You mm-hmm. don't have, you don't have to rip. You just know your stuff about equipment enough, but you have all those other qualities. That's how we, well, our philosophy with hiring kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know that lately, and you, you probably hip to this, that it's been difficult to find em- employment for some seasonal businesses. But for us, we were very fortunate that we had so many kids come back this year and very fortunate because our kids are great. They're awesome. Uh, And I'm guessing that you probably have kids that want to come back year in and year out. Correct. Correct. I'm, I'm guessing that your, your employees love working that. Yeah, right. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get rid of you. Yeah, <laughs> they pay me to leave. That's right. <laughs> what business advice would you give to someone trying to start a business in Ocean City? Uh, I'd I'd be the last person to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you don't want to ask me that. <laughs> I'm just a surfer. <laughs> I think it's just to make sure it, it just making sure it's something you want to do. That I think for me. That's the only thing I can draw from it, that just that one aspect alone. And I think, you know, th- there needs to be a demand for it in the community somewhere. You know, if, if, if there is and there are people that need it and want it, that have, have maybe talked about it and you enjoy doing it, maybe that's the, you know, the two main things that I can really think about. But, mm-hmm. you know, think about if you want to do it for a long time and you enjoy it enough to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you going to get up every morning and be excited about it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Where do you get your pizza from? Uh, I get it from Mac and Mancos. That's your go-to? Yeah. It's interesting. I, I like debating pizza in town. Mm-hmm. It's one of my things. And sometimes right. people ask me, like 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 you just did now, like, what, what's, your, what's your go-to pizza? I'm like, I don't want to bum anybody out, but I'm going to say Mac and Mac-O's. <laughs> well, you got to ask the I grew up on it. You got to ask the get, I got to yeah. ask the question. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I grew up on Mac and Mac-O's. I love it. It's it's great pie. So, that's my go-to pizza. Well, and it's not nice saying other pizza places. You, there's a lot of great pizza in, in Ocean City, but mm-hmm. Manco is is awesome. Uh yeah, it's really good pie. I really like it. How about breakfast? Breakfast? I I don't Oh, when I do, when I do, and it's rare that I go out to breakfast. Um, I like going to John and Patty's because it's all very different, and it could be something new when you go in there. Mm-hmm. I love John and Patty's. Yeah, I, you know, but I rarely go out to breakfast. I mean, I live in Strathmere, so it's rare that I get to North End, or you know, in the morning to to, to do that. But like um, when I like when I get my car serviced at uh, Best Tire. Okay. By the way, if you're going to ask me where I like to get my tires. There you go, go, best best tire. Best tire. (laughs) I go across the street and go to John Patty's and wait for my car to get get done. So it works out great. I get a great breakfast and my car gets done lickety split. They really are. They are really nice people. I've never had a bad meal there. No. Reddy's is also good. I love Reddy's. Yeah. It's so classic. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's you walk in there and you're like, it's a time warp. Mm-hmm. That's the other place that came to mind, you know, just after I said uh, John and Patty's. But you're talking about two different places. Yeah, hundred percent. And they they complement each other, which mm-hmm. is which is really cool. I mean, like again, you sit up there at the the bar top and you know you get yourself some, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, so, uh, being in Strathmere, mm-hmm. do you go to the Doville? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, a great I really, place. I really like the Doville. Now, and that, they just redid it. Did they? Yeah, it's like three years now. Oh, really? Yeah, is it under yeah. new ownership? Yeah, or? it is. Uh, Tim Fox bought it and turned it around, and the food is really good. Uh, different menu? Or a totally, same? totally different menu. So it's full facelift in every aspect. They did a wonderful job. They bought a killer crew in. They did in every aspect of the business. They just hooked it up. Nice. Yeah. Have yeah. to check and it you know, out. The, one of the cool things, and I like... I like oysters. 
Mm-hmm. So you can go there and you can choose between six types of oysters like any, any, any on any given night. Really? Oh, yeah. And they're good. And they're local ones, which is really kind of cool, too. So they're really supporting the local business. And they serve a lot of local beer, too. Oh, I, that's I, great. I, I don't drink beer, but the, a lot of people like the local kind of Like the m- local The local, local beer, The local brewers, yeah. Uh, Mexican food. Oh. Well, Mexican or Tex-Mex? Either. Okay. Mexican food, Las Olas. Taqueria. Las Olas. Yeah, Chopapana. Where is that? It's in the ShopRite Shopping Center in Marmora. Have not tried that. It's wonderful. Is it? It's great. What do you get? Uh, I usually get the, the rice bowl sometimes with um, chorizo tofu or with the lingua, otherwise known as cow tongue. <gasps> cow tongue. Let's talk about it. Cow tongue's great. Their cow tongue's awesome. <laughs> Lingua. I, I just tried cow tongue. <laughs> it's good. I just tried cow tongue um, from Rojos. Yeah. And uh, D- yeah, there you go. Uh, the taste was good. The texture was uh, a challenge. It, you know, I've had it uh, when I've had it with from Joe's place. It's been tender. It's so tender. Yeah. It's uh, it's very tender. It's uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. Right. Yeah. I know. Me too. I thought it was going to be, I was kind of this obscure kind of texture. And I'm like, no, this is really good. It, the taste was amazing. Yeah. It's, it's really good. And, um, he's got some, got some great stuff. Got street, he's got street tacos, regular tacos. He's got, uh, street corn. I mean, it's just, it's all hooked up there. I will try it out. And then the Tex Mex thing would be Red's jersey, which I, I like Red's stuff. It's, it's a more of a Tex Mex thing and mm-hmm. it's super hearty. It's big it's big food. Big portion. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's big food. He does a great job. Great. Yeah. Great. Now have you tried yesterday's? Haven't aren't they under new ownership? Uh, it, owned by Tim, who owned the Doville. Oh, okay. Okay. And is that a new menu or uh, that what is, is a new menu. Yeah. How's it going over there? Yeah, I don't I don't get in there as much as uh but yeah, it's going great. The place looks awesome. And and they did I, I guess it was the same similar philosophy as the Dobell. They just went in there, revamped everything in every aspect, food, the decor, you know, um, whatever else, you know, it just, the, the brand new and the liquor store is all brand new. And, you know, it's just, it looks great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't eaten much on it, so I can't speak on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks, it looks terrific. Yeah. I had some tacos over there mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. Uh Berea tacos? Uh, oh, yeah, the Berea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they were outstanding. Yeah. They were really, really good. So, for Christmas, is everyone getting surfer supply they swag in, in your family? Absolutely. <laughs> it's all the kids. We don't we don't do not shop for the, the adults anymore, you know, so it's just all for the kids. I got some nieces and nephews, and, and they all want surfer supplies gear, so it makes it easy for me. Mm-hmm. So, I just, one afternoon, I'll have nothing to do. I'll go around, okay, this is for Piper. This is for Riley. This is for Emilio. You know, so it's easy. Great. Yeah. Great. Correct. You're ready for the holidays. I love it. I love Christmas. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being on the the podcast. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Happy holidays to you. Uh, Happy holidays to you. And I will be seeing you soon at Surfer Supply at 3101 Asbury Avenue in Ocean City, New Jersey. And I hope you come back again soon with Andrew Funk, your partner from the one and only Ocean City Institution, Surfer Supply. Thank you. Yes, we'd love to come back. So thank you very much. And happy holidays again to you. Happy holidays. Thank you.